I am free, 
day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And let us move even deeper, deeper into that place, that sacred space within each of us. And just breathe in. I am free. I am free. I am unlimited. I am unlimited. Say those words softly and quietly. And so, as I stepped into that sweet space, I began a meditation, and some, from somewhere, there was music. 
what was a chant? Is my Amnama Shavaya chant that I had on my phone or Pandora somewhere? I'm not sure where, but it started playing. And I looked around the room, actually, like, where's that coming from? And I realized that it was playing on my phone. I didn't start it. So, anyways, I got the message. So, would you pray with me? Loving God, I give all of me to you to do with as thy wilt. Use me, God, as a channel, as an instrument. Relieve me of bondage of self. Help me to step aside and allow your words to flow through me. And so it is. Amen. I forgot to pray for the electronic divine flow, but I think I'll offer that up right now. <laughs> so I have a few things that I wanted to share with you that require the divine flow of electronics. <laughs> so we see that and hold that space of it working perfectly. The title, as you saw in, in the bulletin, is Give Yourself Permission. Um, and what I'd like to do first is to play a song for you by Karen Drucker. Many of you might rec you know, recognize this. It's called I Give Myself Permission. Just listen to the words. Facilitate Julia Cameron's work 
The Artist's Way, and also her latest book, It's Never Too Late to Begin Again. Yeah. And it filled in, in both of those are exercises and activities that um, help us get in touch with what our real desire is, what, what um, get in touch with our creative selves. That many of us have stuffed or covered up. Uh, I, for one, have done that over the years. But it helps us get in touch with our divine selves, or our true selves, or the individual that God created us to be. Some of the exercises ask questions like, what would I do if I didn't think it was too crazy? You know, what, is, what would that look like? I'm going to turn this off before we have something else come up. Okay. So the, the question you ask yourself, and without thinking about it a lot and without a whole lot of filters, just like, what would I do if it didn't look crazy or seem too silly? Or do you have another question is, what would I do if money were not an issue? What would I do if I had no fear? And these questions we ask ourselves to try to get in touch with our longings or what's inside of us that wants to be expressed, that oftentimes we, we tamp down or for whatever reason aren't freely expressing that. What holds us back in our lives is our fear. You know, the acronym that we hear, fear, false evidence appearing real. And sometimes, when you take a close look at it, you'll find out that our fears are not exactly what we thought, thought they were. But what it requires is for us to take a look at that. I have one other. The, the poem at the end of that last song of Karen Drucker's is a um, poem written by Marion Williamson. It's often been credited to Na Nelson Mandela. However, it's, it's actually from Marion Williamson's uh, book, A Return to Love. And I have this here uh, uh, that you can hear her actually, her words, her reading. Um, and a few extra words, but I want, I want to share this with you today. This is one of my favorite readings.
as we let our own light shine, we subconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. not 
been able to sing or express joy in that way. Um, while I'm not ready to do a solo, <laughs> you may have hear me singing loudly sometimes, and it's just my inner divine wanting to express itself. And I do that now with great joy. Uh, I give myself permission to pay attention to my own desires and needs to express the truth of who I am. So what keeps us playing small? You know, in the poem she talks about is playing small, so others will feel good. I want to share with you one of my all-time favorite books. It's called The Big Leap, and it's written by Gay Hendricks. And he talks about paying attention to our upper limit. <coughs> What that is, is our upper limits, is like a thermostat setting that we all have that limits the amount of happiness, success, um, creativity that we allow ourselves to enjoy. The thermostat setting usually happens when we're younger and we don't realize it. But what you'll notice is once you're aware of your upper limit problem is that this, th this thermostat will hold us back in all ways good, from love, financial abundance, and creativity that is really rightfully ours. In the book, Gay Hendricks tells us or identifies hidden barriers that we have that um, all seem real, but they're all based on fear and false beliefs. One thing is worry. And I can, now that I'm aware of having an upper limit thermostat setting, I can notice when I'm in a really good place, things are going well, I'm feeling like I'm in the flow, and I can just reach up and grab the lowest hanging fruit, if you will, the reach up and grab something to start worrying about, spinning on, obsessing about. And there's plenty of things to grab today in the world and the news, just turn on the news. But anyways, so what it does is it takes away from that really good feeling that I was allowing myself to enjoy. Uh, so now that I have that, that information and awareness about myself, I'm able to, you know, just like, hey, pause here and just say, like, you know what, I'll worry about that later. But I'm going to really enjoy this, what I've worked for, to get to a place of where I can have peace. And he talks about how when we're in the zone of genius, he says we live our lives in four levels our four zones, but the zone of genius is that place where we're actually fulfilling our desires, what we've come here and who we've come here to be. It's that place that when you're when you're doing something that you love, it may be for you playing the guitar or painting, um, whatever it is, that place and that zone that when time passes, like you look up and hours have gone by. He says that we can live our lives in that place. And he also tells us how to do it in here. But one of the first uh, ways of moving into that space is by identifying what fears that we have or what, what, where we limit ourselves. Discovering your zone of genius is your life's big leap. He says that everything up until now has been about hops, not leaps. Hopping, though it seems safe, is actually hazardous to your health. If you confine yourself to hops, you run the risk of rusting from the inside out. Powerful. So yeah, not only does he help identify the problem, he also gives the answers and how the solution and how to, how to work through those. And I would like to add, to, as a reminder, is to be gentle with yourself that's helped me, and I, I realized I wasn't sure where all that came from, but um, I've learned through Julia Cameron's work that when we're growing and healing and, and moving toward our wholeness, that many times uh, she would remind us to be gentle. It's not my first reaction, not my uh, second nature, but I have learned over time is just to be gentle and an observer of my discoveries and as I recover my true self. So I have a story, I can't, well, I have one last story, let me just put it this way. It's a fishing tale. <laughs> so there was this young man who was new to town, and he, was, he went fishing at, down on the riverbank. 
and he wasn't catching anything. But he noticed down the riverbank there was a man, an older man, sitting, and he was catching a lot of fish, bringing one in after the other. But he also, he was puzzled because the man, when he would bring a fish in, would do something, observe, and then he would throw as many back as he could. And so, being new to the area, the guy thought, oh, I better go down there and check because there may be some law or regulation that says I can only keep the fish if it's a certain size. So he walked down the riverbank and introduced himself and, and said, hey, I noticed, you know, I noticed what you're doing is throwing so many back. What's up with that? And the old man said, he said, well, you know, you see, you see this, this ruler here, a ruler that was broken off, he said, this ruler is the size of my frying pan. <laughs> so what I'm doing is when I catch a fish that fits, I keep it, but all the others I am releasing because they won't fit in my frying pan. And so I ask you today, if it's time for you to look for a larger new frying pan. I had that question asked to me many years ago by my mentor, one of my mentors, Mary Manley Marcy. She asked, she asked me if it was time for me to get a new frying pan. So I'll leave that with you today. That given your, your choices um, and have think about the poem, our greatest fear, our deepest fear. I have a copy of that for everybody. I'll make sure that you get a copy of that. But Deb, at this time, will you put that poem up on the screen here? I would like to share it with you all. Let's see how it how it transmits. If not, I have it on paper for you. Up. We might have to put it on paper. The point of this last exercise is to read this poem in first person. I think it's very powerful for me. So, give you guys a copy of it. Okay. Joe, will you set the centerpiece down? Maybe it's possible. The centerpiece that they can see most of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have to participate today. Of course. Uh -huh. Yeah, we heard this poem in Karen Drucker's song and, and also read by the author, Marian Williamson, and I think what I'd like to leave you with is, is, is our reading it individually with every place that there's an hour, my or I. So let's read this together. My, my deepest fear is not that I am inadequate. My deepest fear is that I am powerful beyond measure. It is my light, not my darkness, that most frightens me. I ask myself, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who am I not to be? I am a child of God. My plain song does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will not feel insecure around me. I am all meant to shine as children do. I was born to manifest the glory of God that is within me. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as I let my own light shine, I unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As I am liberated from my own fear, my presence automatically liberates others. Namaste. Stand and sing an appropriate song. Do all you can.
if I were praised I'd walk the ways of speech Where fools and dreamers Said a truth I never spent If I were brave